So we often hear this mantra that nutritional advice is constantly changing and that Americans don't know what to eat. Um, how would you address that? How would you respond? Well, it, it's just not true. It's a myth. And, and I've actually written about it in my blogs. I think that one was for U.S. News and World Report. No two nutritionists agree is a myth. Um, it's, it's actually remarkable how much consensus there is about the fundamentals of healthy eating. And, and I have proof because I've created an organization called the True Health Initiative that's invited a who's who from all around the world and asked them, do you agree that these are the fundamentals of healthy eating? Diets that emphasize vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, water for thirst, all of the food minimally processed. And, and everybody agrees. And, and I, I knew that because I have spent time with nutrition experts around the world from vegan to paleo. So th there is money to be made emphasizing the differences. You can sell this diet today and that diet next week and big publishing benefits from that and big media benefits from that. And that's what propagates the confusion. If people stay confused about what a healthy diet is, you can keep selling the next and the next and the next. But when you actually spend time with nutrition experts, they always do pretty much the same thing. They go for minimally processed food, they fill their plates with plants, even the paleo experts do, and then the paleos will have wild salmon or grass-fed beef, and the vegans will have lentils or beans, but their, their two plates look so much more like one another than either looks like what the typical American is eating. It's time that the world knew that. It's time that the general public knew what nutrition experts have long known. The fundamentals of good nutrition haven't changed for decades. We refine them, of course. We know a lot more now about the differential effects of different kinds of fat. But, but the fundamentals that, you know, diets high in, in processed foods and um, saturated fat and uh, added sugar and refined starch are better. We've been saying these things for 40 years. The first dietary guidelines for Americans came out in 1980. There were seven key takeaway points. Number five was eat less sugar. In 1980, 40 years ago, that, it's not as if somebody discovered that last Wednesday. So we agree with one another massively. The weight of evidence very clearly points toward diets of minimally processed plant-based foods. Um, and we don't keep changing our minds. Uh, we keep refining our, our opinion based on science, but the fundamentals are remarkably time-tested as well. What about the issue of personalized nutrition? Because some of these new companies that are coming out now say that you're right, that fundamentally public health advice hasn't changed for decades. The problem is people aren't following it. Well, let's back up for a second. There, there are really two major reasons why people haven't been following the advice. We'll come to personalization in a second because I, I do agree advice that's unique to you is more motivating and, and people react better to it. But the other reason people haven't been following the advice is, one, our culture has been making a ton of money out of sowing confusion by you know, pretending that we keep changing the right advice. Two, the food industry has been exploiting the messages of experts and turning them into nonsense. So when we heard that we'd be better off eating less saturated fat, it's not as if we all started eating more beans and lentils instead of meat. We started eating low-fat junk food. And then when we didn't get thin and healthy, we blamed it on cutting fat instead of on eating junk. And so instead of learning, we repeated that and we started eating low-carb junk food and then gluten-free junk food and all the while big food has been inventing new inventories of junk food putting lipstick on a pig if you will mm. and profiting from it and so that's part of the problem too uh, and then there's the fact that you know the media love to hyperbolize every study that comes out as if each new study changes everything we thought we knew before and science doesn't work that way so the public is genuinely confused about what a healthy diet is and I don't think you can get there from here until you know where there is. That's crucial and we have to fix that. But then the issue of customization comes in. Let's say we did know where there was, but you said to me, you know, I, I seem to do better with a higher protein diet or I seem to do better uh, on a lower glycemic diet or I'm not sure which diet is best for me and I want advice that is customized to me. Well, I believe, first of all, we're a lot alike. We are all members of the same species. We're all cousins but we're also quite different. We're individuals, and so the best diet for you and the best diet for me may be different. There'll be variations on the same common theme, but they may be different, and you will react better to a diet that's tailored to you because you'll feel better on it, you'll do better on it, your weight will be better on it, so that's important. But the other thing is motivation. To get you started, if I can say, look, I'm not providing you generic diet advice, there, there are fundamentals that are good for everybody, but I have done an analysis of your genes or of your microbiome or whatever it may be, 
and I can offer you advice that is highly customized to you, and I won't deviate from the basic theme of a healthy diet for everybody, but within that theme, I'm picking the variant that's going to work best for you. That science is early. It's still evolving. We have a lot more to learn about nutrigenomics and, and what specific <laughs> foods are best for whom. But that game has begun, and I do think there's real value there. So I would say, you know, in the spirit of having our cake and eating it too, the fundamentals of a health-promoting diet for our species are common to us all. And, and they really are focused on diets that emphasize vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, water for thirst, with or without all the other things we might add. And then the customization is the icing on that cake. So that's the common cake, but we ought to customize because people will be more motivated, they'll be happier. And, and ultimately, at the end of all of this, I think we have to remember, what is good food and good health? What are they for? And the answers are there to make life better. Healthy people have more fun. Good food is fun. Good health is fun. We really want the one in the service of the other. So you ought to be able to love the food that loves you back.